My name is Matthew Charles Santoro. I'm a director, designer, uh, writer, um, artist. I've been out in LA since 2005. I came out, uh, you know, with big dreams of becoming a director. I, I had like $500 in an air mattress, and right now I just want to talk to you guys about the lessons that I learned from literally coming out on day one to. 11 years later when I got to direct my first feature titled Higher Power. So lesson one actually is throw yourself into it. That's something that I did when I came out to LA for the first time without a backup plan because a lot of the times, you know, we do things because they're safe, you know, and, and, uh, and I try to hold on to that mentality. It's, it's um, with every project I do really is is I throw myself into it like I don't even have a backup plan. It's a, a matter of survival at that point. I ended up, you know, working my way up to up the ranks in the VFX world and finally got the opportunity after 11 years to, to do a, an independent film, my first movie, uh, which just released about two months ago. I had about half a million dollars to shoot this thing and I only shot it in, in 23 days. So. I had to be really resourceful as far as uh, coming up with creative solutions. A lot of times people look at uh, a budget like a box, you know, like you're restricted. And I tried to focus on not so much on the, the walls of that box, but the freedom that you have within it, you know. A small, a small budget, you have a smaller box, but there's a lot of space to play in there if you're creative. So I'm going to show you the trailer right now. Again, this was... Uh, it took me about five years to finish this, um, and I did about, I want to say, 99% of the, uh, the visual effects myself because the resources were, you know, we didn't have any. I had one, one computer, <laughs> really. Uh, and usually you have like a render farm, and, and I ended up getting theatrical distribution in a, uh, in a, you know, so here it is. I'll show you right now so you can get it. This gamma ray burst is the last thing that mankind will see before we are blown out of existence. We are essentially staring down the barrel of a gun. I know about your work. I know they turn their back on it. But what if I told you I had a plan? That's the only thing powerful enough to stop what's coming. I need you to lift that firearm and shoot this woman in the head. Or I'm gonna put a bullet in your daughter's head. It's time to see what you're made of. Optics in plan. I shut down the program for a reason. You have 15 minutes to get to the next location. Clock's ticking. Show me how strong you really are. Why are you doing this to me? I did what you asked me to! When the universe decides what it wants, it's pointless to resist. With the police in hot pursuit, we are now being told the man's name is Joseph Stedman. I want these streets closed down now! What did you do to me? Now you see how this works, Joe. The angrier you get, the more you unlock. Where do I go? To see how far we can push it. It's time. Smile! I need you to dig deeper, Joe. We need to unlock more. I've really never seen anything like this. out there that are greater than us. Second lesson that I want to talk about is to smash through every window of opportunity. When I first came out to LA and I got my first job working at a small visual effects company that worked with um, in commercials and they also did opening titles for uh, television shows. I had the opportunity to go in there and pitch on an opening title credit sequence. And usually when you're pitching an idea, you create storyboards or still images. And because it was my first job, my first experience trying to get work, I ended up uh, just basically animating the entire 
uh, opening title sequence uh, as my pitch, and because of that, I ended up getting the gig, and I went from you know just getting out to Los Angeles to uh, being in charge of a whole team of people and being like the art director on that project, which is an incredibly rewarding experience for me. And that was because, you know, like I said, it was just a small little window of opportunity that I really took advantage of um, and tried to, you know, push, push myself as, as far as I could uh, in that case. This company, Hydraulics, hired me. Um, and one of the first uh, movies that I worked on was uh, 300. Um, what I had to do, my responsibility at that point was I was a matte painter. I had to do all the like the backgrounds and the sets in the background, and we had to do the skies. And I remember Zack Snyder specifically wanting to have uh, a lot of painter, painterly texture inside of the sky. So we had to scan all this different types of paint in, inside of the clouds and combine the two of those to create almost like a graphic novel-like feel. That type of attention to detail is what really makes a lot of a lot of his work, I think, you know, incredible. So, and then lesson three for me, you know is uh, never say you can't. When I first got the hydraulics, the visual effects company, my boss, he, he was just giving me all these different assignments and, and I just took them on without, without saying I couldn't. I just figured it out. You know, I figured out a, a creative solution for everything um, by just you know, research and, and, and hard work. And through that process, I ended up just taking in a whole like no, just taking in so much knowledge about the VFX world um, by not ever seeing I couldn't, couldn't do it, you know, just constantly trying to, to, to make it work. Um, so these are some of the movies that I worked on uh, at Hydraulics, like X-Men and Fantastic Four and G.I. Joe, a bunch of, bunch of other stuff. So right now what I'm going to do is go through some of the concepts that I made old concepts from back in the day uh, to give you a sense of some of the responsibilities that I had as a visual effects artist working in, in that field. So this was like a really early concept I did for The Incredible Hulk. It was like after Ang Lee's Incredible Hulk, the new Marvel one. And, uh, you know, the director wanted to have a darker, grittier vibe. So, you know, Silver Surfer, same thing for the Fantastic Four. I, there's, you know, world-devouring beasts and things. And oh, this was for um, Terminator. It was really fun kind of exploring that world as well. I had a build out the, the uh, a version of the robot city. And I was trying, we had, had to do a lot of thinking about how the, the robots would think, you know, and, and, and uh, how they would create their architecture. So I, I used like a circuit board to try to, you know, emulate, emulate like a circuit board on a, on a larger scale, I guess. Just all kinds of fun projects. Umbrella Academy, that actually never happened, but it was fun to work on. Oh, this was for uh, an adaptation of Voltron. Um, just, just wanted to show you some of these things. Oh, I got into doing some vehicle design where you really started to have to think about, you know, not just how things look, but the, the function of things, you know, how, uh, th like how this vehicle would work inside of a, you know, on an alien planet, you know, and I came up with this idea for this, this spider robot, basically, where the character is, like, on a gyroscope, and he would maneuver around the planet on this thing, and, um, some project stuff for the uh, Dark Tower. Let's see here, more Dark Tower stuff. Oh, this is some Cerberus stuff for um, Hercules. Some ship designs, you know, it just goes on and on. More robots, <laughs> vehicles. Also got into doing storyboarding, which is really great because I really wanted to, to be a director and it was all about that narrative, that was in the back of my mind constantly, even though I was working in the visual effects world. So I, I got to work on storyboards for uh, Noah, which is Darren Aronofsky's movie, and he was very specific about wanting each one of the storyboards to feel kind of realistic. So it was really great kind of finding all these different compositions with him and, and uh, exploring that entire world. Did some you know, different concepts for uh, Jack the Giant Slayer, uh, G.I. Joe. While I was at Hydraulics, they uh, actually got to work with um, Trent Reznor, and I actually did an album cover for, for 50 Cent <laughs> for one of his uh, projects. I'm just going to kind of slide through a bunch of this. Oh, this is, this is more recent. This is a, uh, for the Pacific Rim movie that just came out. 
I had to come up with the idea for the end title sequence. I don't know if any of you have seen that, but we had to scan in all these different uh, paint sequences, that again, uh, paint, paint uh, textures, which was really fun to create kind of this combination, a collage of these robots and this really kind of beautiful painterly environment. Uh, so, so this brings me to uh, this guy, Predator. Um, I had a really interesting experience working on this movie. This is my uh, first on-set experience, actually. The directors hired me to put together a lookbook uh, to pitch to the studio so that they could get the movie off of the ground. So I had to develop all the, all the different uh, technologies for the Predator, and I came up with this idea for like, the side of his face being burnt off, uh, like he got into a, a battle with an alien at some point. It was really fun kind of exploring this character and looking into his past and trying to you know, find out like how to make him gritty and cool. And I even worked on the uh, the alien pl or the predator homeworld, like where where the alien would live, you know, or the predators would live. Oh yeah, and I also did the the uh, predator language, which was really fun. I had a had a very tribal element to it. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out, you know, how this their whole language would be uh, designed. Um, I even got to to design the helmet, which was really awesome, because this is one of the first times that I saw my work come to life. It went from a sketch through a drawing to actually being real. And, um, and then I went from there to even working on the, uh, the Predator uh, vision. So it was like how the Predator sees, you know, the targeting systems and just exploring all of that. I got some animation here. So it's targeting systems. I built this whole thing out on like a 3D graph. This was the Predator's uh, computer system. He had like a whole holographic um, computer system that we explored, which was really fun. So that brings me to the fourth lesson. When I was uh, at Hydraulics, again, I wanted to be a director. And you're not going to be a director unless you direct. You've got to pick up a camera, and you've got to make that happen on your own. So after having that onset experience, that's what I did. I, uh, I got a camera, and I went out with some friends, and I started to build this world, the world of Offline. Offline is this science fiction adventure tale that I put together, basically like a hot rod in the garage that I had that I was just tinkering away at outside of my day job. So you would, I was working during the day, working on visual effects, and then at night I'd come home, and then I work on this because I wanted to be a director, you know? And so I started to create this world. And, and it took me like literally a year. I, I was building sets out and went out to the desert with my friends and you know, I actually casted my dad to be the, the bad guy, the villain in it. <laughs> uh, he's got a great look, so I mean, I just went with it. <laughs> um, so lesson five, uh, this actually came to me from a really good friend of mine. He's a a musician, and I remember showing him my first edit of the trailer for Offline, and he told me, he told me like straight up that I should push it harder, you know, he was telling me that like, if you're going to put your name on something, you got to bleed for it, because it's an extension of yourself. So I took that advice from him, and I went back, and I worked even harder on Offline, and I actually finished it and put it out online, I'm going to show it to you right now, and it went viral. And that's what kind of kick-started my career, you know? It's, it's because I made that effort to uh, put this thing together. <laughs> Establish mental connection and begin manual search program. <laughs>
This is my world. So that was uh, my first uh, attempt at uh, being behind the camera, and uh, and it really, really helped me to project forward in my career because after this happened, I ended up signing with my agent at Creative Artists Agency and Management 360, and I uh, started going to general meetings at Warner Brothers and Fox. Uh, it was a really exciting time for me um, because it was like I finally got out from behind the desk of being a visual effects artist and, and now people were looking at me like I was a director and that's, that's what I wanted to do, you know. Um, but I still had a long way to go, <laughs> still had a long way to go. Uh, so after Offline, I actually had this oppor another opportunity that was really amazing for me, uh, was to work on the Dark Tower series. Uh, I got hired by Ron Howard and Akiva Goldsman. Uh, my job with these two guys was I was a creative consultant. We broke down all these books into two scripts into in uh, three seasons of television. I and mean, this is before the Dark Tower movie that came out. I mean, that was their uh, origi original goal. But the lessons that I learned during that process were so valuable, just being so open and listening to them. And my job while I was there was to, you know, be the what's cool guy. Like, I had to come up with cool ideas for weapons and different types of concepts for environments and characters. and. But it also got to that point, too, where Ron started to, to trust in my opinion as a, um, you know, as a filmmaker, and we'd talk about character, you know, and it, it was so awesome to have him listen to what I was saying and take it in. So that's why I say for lesson six is to listen, because he did that in such an amazing way. When you're working in a collaborative environment, it's really important to keep an open ear and take in other people's opinions, because all, they all have value. Again, back to... One of my uh, original uh, lessons was a window of opportunity. So I saw this as a little bit of a window of opportunity, working with Ron and Akiva. And I had this idea uh, for the, the gunslinger in the movie. I had an idea for how he could shoot, a different, a different concept for how he could shoot his gun, not just like normally. And instead of just pitching the idea to Ron, I went out to the desert and... Uh, I, I shot uh, like a small sequence over a weekend to, to show him my ideas, you know, as, as what the concept would look like in reality, because he had no idea that I wanted to be a director at the time. And so I put this whole thing together with some, some of my friends. I built out this concept, the costume and everything like that. I'm going to show you actually the, a clip from it right now. finished that for them, and, and when I presented it to them, they couldn't believe it. It was actually, they were just like, what? <laughs> what did you just make, and why? And, uh, but he was so impressed that he actually uh, approached me uh, to adapt a comic book into a feature, this comic book called We Kill Monsters, that Imagine Entertainment had the rights to, uh, the property. And so he wanted me to, to write the script and, 
and attach myself as a uh, director. And We Kill Monsters is about two brothers from Texas. And, uh, there's like a monster outbreak in their town, and the younger brother ends up getting bit in the arm, and his arm turns into a monster arm. And, and so I went for, you know, I think it was like two years developing this project with them. In my version of the movie, I have it so it's not just monsters. They're mutated farm animals, actually. It's, a, it's kind of like a, a genetic modification gone wrong. Some of the vehicle designs I did for it. This next thing was, again, it was another proof of concept that I put together uh, to try to get this movie off of the ground, um, where I went out and shot uh, this with a couple of friends. And again, didn't have any money. I just had just, uh, just one computer and some hard work. So I'll just show you a short section of it. Right now, it's a disease as frightening as it is deadly, and the U.S. Agriculture Department is brain-wasting infection that can be transferred to humans. The USDA released, uh, just released, uh, information within the last... The animal was a dairy cow. The start of an epidemic. Our lives got a tranquilizer in it, and this thing just went crazy. It started to take off. It headed away from us to the wooded area. History, how it is to track the disease. Apparently we could not have animals running loose in this county. We were... time to show you all of it, but <laughs> it goes on and on. I, and I actually got into doing a lot of previs work for this, uh, that project as well. Again, I don't really have enough time to show you any of that. I mean, just go for a little bit of it. But um, previs is like a rough animation to give uh, the people you're working with the idea of, of your intentions. You build out these sets, and, and uh, I used Cinema 4D to build all these sets, and I animated these characters so that they could see what I wanted to pull off when I got to direct a movie. What the? So, I can't show you all of it, but <laughs> I'm running out of time. Another one, another previous. So anyways, another project I have in development is this comic book called Breath of Bones that I wrote with Steve Niles. And I'm also developing this into a feature. Uh, right now, some drawings I did for it. So basically, I just wanted to wrap this up and uh, kind of go back to my original title for this talk, Beyond the Pixel. And I guess the, the biggest lesson that I learned through uh, my experiences being out in Los Angeles is, uh, and trying to become a filmmaker is that, I, you know, we have all these tools to do so much, so many powerful tools to make things look incredible. And it's becoming easier uh, every single year, faster and easier. But, you know, as visual effects artists, it's really, it's easy for us to get caught up on, on the way things look first, you know? And, and if you put that, you gotta put that focus um, into, into the, the things that actually make things feel human first before you know, the visual effects element, you know, the characters and the story and the heart behind stuff. Because that's the most important aspect of a story, you know. It's the things that we can relate to. Uh, so, I mean, that, that for me was the biggest lesson um, coming out of uh, finishing my, my, my first movie. Was I put a lot of time into trying to make the movie feel so big. Like, I just wanted to come out of the gate, you know, swinging for the fences, I guess. And... Uh, and 
I, I look back at it, and I, I, you know, as I watch my movie now, it's, I wish I, I spent more time on, on focusing on those types of things. And so that was the biggest lesson that I learned through that entire process, and, and, and what I'm going to focus on now in the future, you know, first and foremost. It's, a, it's all about the heart, you know? Uh, so that's the challenge. You've got you to look uh, beyond the pixel. So thank you. Thank <laughs> you.